This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now, back on March the 11th, you could buy a share of Arvin Meritor for about 32 cents. Not today. The transportation parts supplier has been a big beneficiary of investor enthusiasm, and those shares are up, well, they're more than doubled year to date. We've got uh, Charles Chip McClure. He is the chairman and the CEO of Arvin Meritor. He joins us from Detroit. Uh, welcome to the program. Well, thanks, Pim. It's great to be here today. Chip, uh, just start by giving us an update. You recently uh, entered into an agreement to sell a portion of the company. This was the uh, wheels division, the uh, light vehicle uh, steel wheels division. Bring us up to date, and when do you expect that to close? Sure. This is actually part of our ongoing transformation that we actually announced a couple years ago, and this is just one more step in that. If I go back historically, we uh, sold a couple years ago our light vehicle aftermarket business, then our emissions technology business in 07, and earlier in the quarter, a portion of our chassis business. But this wheels business, which is a great business down in Mexico and Brazil with uh, a lot of uh, support or supply in the, uh, the Americas, was part of our ongoing transformation strategy to look to, again, continue to kind of refocus the company back to its core business, which is the commercial vehicle side of that. So we're pleased to announce that at earnings call back uh, earlier this month. And the second part of your question, we expect to close it uh, by the end of this quarter. So uh, it's a good uh, move. It's, we're selling it to a company, uh, Yashpi Maxion, down in Sao Paulo. I was down in Brazil last week to meet with them. I think it's going to be a great marriage of uh, two good companies. So I think it works well on their end. But as importantly, it provides cash to us as we go through these challenging quarters. And it allows us to continue to transform the company and refocus it back on the commercial vehicle side. All right, we'll talk a little bit about some of the uses for that cash, right? Because I think it was, what, about $100, $180 million. This is going to allow you to pay down your revolving line of credit. You're absolutely right. I mean, as you look at this, and, and we are in some challenging industries, and the economy in general is very challenged. And I think the real focus has been within our company the last couple of quarters, not only cost reductions, but making sure you've got adequate liquidity on a go-forward basis. As we look at the uh, proceeds from the sale, as you said, uh, at the gross level, will be about $180 million. I think what it's really going to do is to allow us to pay down that credit facility and again to uh, ensure that as we move forward into subsequent quarters to be better positioned as the markets start coming back. All right. Now, as someone that uh, makes uh, brake systems as well as uh, drive trains, uh, you know, dealing with bankers, uh, they might not want to exactly consider you the most popular company uh, at the moment, but you're in negotiations for an account receivable facility. Can you bring us up to date that? Have all the banks kind of gotten into line with you? Well, as we'd mentioned at the earnings call back uh, earlier this month, that is another thing we're in the process of doing. And as we kind of indicated, expect that to be done uh, this quarter. And I can certainly report that that continues to be on track at this point. All right. Any possibility of any new equity issuance? Uh, should investors be prepared for something for the rest of the year? Well, as I look at it right now, our focus is, is really making sure that we continue on this quarter and the next quarter to make sure we continue to uh, you know, meet our, our credit covenants, which we're in place to do and to make sure we got the liquidity. So really, as I look at it, our focus right now is to make sure that as the markets continue to uh, bounce along the bottom and sell our major markets, that really the focus is more on making sure that we've got the liquidity. So that's really the focus of the companies I look at right now. All right, let's talk about the actual operations. You're talking, what, about 10% margins right now on e EBITDA earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization, 10% margins. Is that dependent a lot on what goes on in your European business? Well, as you look at the margins this, this past quarter, they were, uh, as reported for the third quarter, were about 5.5% uh, EBITDA margins, with the European market in particular being down year over year 75% and sequentially quarter over quarter down 39%. So as you look at it, there's no question. Part of the, uh, the impact is what's going on in Europe. If I look at here in North America, as an interesting aside, our Class 8 market here has been down literally for about two and a half years from normalized rates back in March of 07 to now. It's down more than 50 percent from a normalized level. So here in North America, I think bottom has been found and we're starting to uh, move up a bit. As I mentioned, I was in Brazil last week and we're seeing a nice uh, moving up in Brazil. And then as everybody does talk, and we've had the same kind of experience, if I move to Asia Pacific, the markets in China continue to come back strongly. And we're actually seeing some uh, nice upward trends in the Indian market. Now, one of the things that you've done uh, at Arvin Meritor is you've tried to really reshape the company to not be focused just on what's going on in North America. We were showing people a breakdown of your geographic profile. You want, what, at least 50 percent of the business to be outside of the North American market, correct? Absolutely right. And we're well on track to do that. I think this past quarter we demonstrated that. As I look at that, the North American market is an important market to us. 
But as you kind of indicated, Pim, the uh, European market's also important. And, uh, but the, the important thing for us is to really have the geographic diversity. And if I go back to about a year ago, we actually were uh, trending better than a lot in our space because of the fact we were so geographic, geographically diverse. Uh, because the only market that was really down significantly year over year was the North American market until the entire globe really kind of went through this economic crisis we're working through now. So as we do look at it kind of going forward, not only do we want to transform the company back to just a commercial vehicle company which focuses on on-highway specialty, which for us is really off-highway military, the commercial vehicle aftermarket, and some other things, is in addition we want to make sure that we're globally diverse. We do have strong positions in all these markets. We're not new to any of these markets. We've been in some of these markets since the uh, 70s and 80s, so we're not new. We've got qualified management in those areas. We know how to do business there. We know the supply base. But as we look at it going forward, you're right, we want to have more than 50% of our business in other parts of the world so that, again, we have that diversity on a go-forward basis. All right, and just to, to confirm, uh, going forward, you'd like to sell, what, the body division of that light vehicle uh, steel wheels business, or the, the, the body division? Is that still up for sale? It is. As a matter of fact, if I go back, uh, when we completed the chassis, about 75% of our chassis business has been sold. And what we'd indicated about a year ago when we kind of made the uh, announcement that we were going to uh, continue or finalize the refocusing of the company down to commercial vehicle, there was really three parts of the business that were left. There was a chassis, of which I'd mentioned there's 75 percent of that is completely, uh, you know, the sales are being complete as we speak. Obviously, the body one or the, the wheels one we talked about is complete. And as we move forward, body is our last part of that. Uh, right. And uh, we are in the process and have kind of been very open about the fact that the next step is All to right. kind of complete the transformation I want to is to uh, complete the sale of body. I want to thank you very much, Chip McClure, the CEO of Arvin Meritor.